Ulla Fura, Norway's power storehouse. On the 13th of June 1974, the Norwegian Parliament granted a license for Norway's largest hydroelectric power development project ever. Initial blasting for the new project began in late summer the same year. The Norwegian state had the rights to utilize hydropower opportunities in the area since 1912, but it was not until 1971 that the state-owned electricity company presented a general plan consisting of two options. One option was based on a development towards Lake Suldal and Hjulsfjord, while the other was a development towards Forebotten in the Jursen Fjord. The Suldal option was chosen. It provided 40% more power than the Fure option, and the project was named Ulla Fure. The municipal council in Suldal voted unanimously to approve the development. There was little industry in this fringe municipality, and the population was declining. There was a need for more jobs. During the development, employment peaked at 1,550 people. The construction phase was officially concluded on the 31st of December 1988. The watershed, the land area from which the waterway collects water, covers 2,000 square kilometers in three different municipalities, Suldal, Yelmeland and Bikle. There are several places here that average over 2,000 millimeters of annual precipitation. The main aim of the project was to build a kind of power storehouse, the Blorgia Reservoir, which has the highest regulated water level at 1,055 meters above sea level, where energy can be extracted as needed. Hydroelectric power is exploited using France's turbines in three steps, first in the Sardal power plant, then in the Kvildal power station, and finally in the Helen power station. The Ulla Fure project plays a key role in Norwegian energy supply. Total output of the Ulla Fure power plants is 2,057 megawatts, or about 7% of the total installed power output from Norwegian hydroelectric power. Annual average production is about 4,500 gigawatt hours, representing 3.4% of all production in Norway, but it can be far higher if needed due to the vast storage capacity. The reservoir plays a key role due to its large storage capacity. All of the residents in Oslo, Norway's capital city, can get the power they need on a cold winter day from the generators at Ulla Fure. The construction centre was located at Sand, the municipal centre in Suldal. Housing was built for the employees, a new shopping centre and a new primary and lower secondary school were built outside the old city centre. The population grew rapidly by 25%. Prior to construction, the roads in this area were poor. There were no connecting roads towards the east. A drive from Suldal to Oslo took about 12 hours. More than 20 important road projects were started, many of which were of great help to this region. Today, one can drive from Suldal to Oslo in about five hours. Because of the extensive transport of gravel and moraine fill to the massive dams, the roads into the mountains are of high standard. 17 million cubic meters of mass were used during the construction of the large rock fill dams, quite unique here in Norway. It would take an equivalent amount of mass to build a wall two meters thick 
and five meters high along the entire Norwegian-Swedish border. Work on the Adertjörn Dam started early in the construction phase. It is a traditional rock fill dam with an impermeable core of moraine fill and it is the tallest of its kind in the country at 140 meters. The Storvas Dam, on the other hand, is only 90 meters high, but almost 1.5 kilometers long. It is the largest rock fill dam in Norway. Here, an impermeable core of asphalt was chosen, as the use of moraine would have incurred immense transportation costs. For this reason, an asphalt plant was built at the site. Work was stopped in October, November to May due to harsh weather conditions. Several hundred employees worked intensely during the short season. Conditions at Furryjövet Gorge were different and there it was natural to build a concrete dam. The Furavas Dam, which is 1300 meters long, is the largest concrete dam in Norway. In fact, it is the largest concrete construction of any kind in Norway. A concrete mixing plant was built near the dam and large amounts of ice were used to improve and harden the concrete. An ordinary large concrete lorry can transport a load of between five and six cubic meters. A quick calculation thus shows that more than 40,000 loads of concrete were used. In parallel with the work on the dam, tunnels were being constructed that would connect the reservoir to the power stations. 125 kilometers of tunnels, which also encompass the rain gutter principle at the 600 meter level, were needed to get the water to the power stations. The main lines in the tunnel system are the tunnels from the Blorja Reservoir and Lake Sansa, which meet in Soerdal and continue on to Kvildal. Ullafura can be compared to a three-stage rocket. The Soerdal pumped storage power plant utilizes the 465 meter drop between Blosha and Sordal. It was set in operation in 1986. The power station has four generators and produces a total of 640 megawatts. Two of the generators are pure turbine generators, whereas two are reversible and can operate either as turbine generators or as pump units. As pump units, they pump water from the Sansa and Lauvastol's lakes up into Blosha. This is done when the inflow is great and the demand for power is low, which helps balance the power market. Kvildal power station is the next step. The station utilizes the drop between the Sansa and Lauvastel's lakes and Kvildal, a drop of 538 meters. The Kvildal power station was opened by King Olav on the 3rd of June, 1982. With its four generators producing a total of 1,240 megawatts, Kvildal is Norway's largest power station. The lowest step, Helen Power Station, utilizes the drop between Lake Suldal and the Hills Fjord. This drop is 67 meters. The station has two generators with an output of 160 megawatts, and there is additionally a rerouting tunnel to avoid damage from floods in the Suldalslogen river system so that 600 cubic meters of water per second can be released directly out from Lake Suldal into the Hills Fjord. The Ulla Fura facilities as a whole make up Norway's largest power reserve. The completed work has burst the boundaries within the realm of Norwegian hydroelectric power development and garnered attention far beyond Norway's borders. Landscape rehabilitation was a priority issue right from the planning phase. Roads and power line routes were, to the greatest extent possible, adapted to the terrain, so as not to be overly obtrusive. Burrow pits and waste rock dumps were leveled and sowed with native plants. Measures to repair any harm done to hunting or fishing grounds were also important tasks. 
In consideration of salmon fishing in the Sulderslorgen river system, there was an obligation to safeguard a minimum level of water in the river. In addition, salmon ladders were built when the river flows out into the Sandsfossen Falls. A number of other environmental initiatives have been carried out in the waterways, such as the creation of thresholds and erosion control along exposed river stretches. Since the 1970s, annual environmental studies have been conducted in the waterways and particularly in the Sulderslorgen river system. Results suggest that the ulla Fura regulation scheme has managed to balance power production with environmental concerns. Startcraft's operations department in Suldal is responsible for the operation and maintenance of the ulla Fura facility in collaboration with headquarters at the regional offices. Startcraft's regional office monitors and remotely controls the power from the ulla Fura facility along with power from the other power stations in the region. So what has happened with Suldal? The municipality now has nearly 4,000 residents. The area's facilities offer many possibilities and fantastic nature-based experiences in both summer and winter. The local community has at the same time managed to preserve and strengthen its original culture and identity. Suldal is one of Norway's largest and most important power-generating municipalities. The Blåsjø plant will play an even more important role as a larger part of Europe's power consumption eventually comes from energy from the wind and sun. During periods with abundant sunshine and abundant wind, surplus energy can be utilized to pump water up into Blåsjø. The water in the reservoir can then be used to produce extra power during periods with little sunshine and little wind. The world needs more energy, less carbon.